I extend very warm greetings to all heads of states, leaders of civil society organizations and the private sector, as well as representatives alike who are in attendance of this summit for democracy. Furthermore, I would like to express my sincere gratitude for the invitation by the President of the United States and an opportunity to contribute to the aspirations of nations large and small, developed and less developed, on the subject of democracy and to listen and speak with great frankness on the challenges facing democracy globally, regionally, and not forgetting in our own countries. Ladies and gentlemen, democracy is a privilege that we all enjoy. It is democracy which vests the supreme authority to the people to directly or indirectly through free and fair elections to elect our leaders. Our governments are elected by the people and in doing so, they bestow their trust in their leaders. As leaders, it is our duty to foster the responsibility conferred on us by our own people. The foundation of my beloved nation with a population of around 12,000 is built on the doctrine of constitutionalism and rule of law. Since independence in 1968, our forefathers in adopting democratic principles have enshrined in our constitution the doctrine of separation of powers. Democracy is indeed an art of mankind. Constitutionalism is governance in accordance with the law. While statutory and administrative powers are given to persons and institutions, such powers must be exercised to ensure that our responsibility to electors and our commitment to the international community remains the main focus. Power is not to be abused to the extent where the majority use it for authoritarian purposes. Powers given to the leaders are to be appropriately utilized. Otherwise, as Lord Acton said, power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. To this we say, therefore, the use of power must always be tempered with wisdom. And as the Bible says, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Otherwise, it will lead to the trampling over of all democratic principles, leaving aside the concept of liberal democracy. My government strongly believes in the traditional democratic principle where power vests with the people and the various institutions of the Republic. Despite having elected members in Parliament for matters of national interest, the opinions of the people matter and are sought. Recently, we made changes to our laws to allow greater participation of the people of Nauru in the decision-making process by the bureaucrats. A national survey of poll will be our norm in the future to decide on important national issues so that individual citizens are able to participate in the decision-making process at the national level. As a nation, Nauru believes in ensuring that every person has access to a free and fair justice system. For that reason, recently we have reformed, transitioned and evolved our judicial system. This includes the establishment of our own final appellate court, which has been given power to determine core legal issues regarding important matters of the constitution and land. Both these subjects deal with fundamental rights and obligations of our people. Access to justice and the respect for human rights go hand in hand. However, our political realities are that limitations on human rights are sometimes placed in the hands of the executive. An independent and fair judiciary with this appellate process provides an avenue for those aggrieved by executive decisions to a secure enforcement of those rights. Our judicial reform is firmly embedded to achieve these goals. Liberal democracy is not synonymous with only giving rights to people to choose their representatives. Often, a majority in Parliament is seen to ignore the rights of the minorities. The Westminster parliamentary system is designed in such a way that the majority are able to control the Parliament. That is the democratic process. In order to ensure that the members of Parliament in Nauru, whether as part or outside of government, have the autonomous power to represent their electors, we have made laws to separate the administrative and financial functions of Parliament from the executive. A parliamentary office headed by the Speaker has complete autonomy on legislative, administrative and financial functions. We must as governments and leaders visualize strategies to fight corruption. Nauru, as a state party to the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, demonstrates its commitment by not only refining its anti-corruption laws, but by also implementing them. Nauru also participates in meetings of the convention parties to educate its population on corruption-related issues. 
We must, as servants of our countries, envisage how to promote the respect for human rights by succeeding in the quest to regulate, civilize, and create mechanisms for order around us which protects harmony, guarantees safe possession, and allows society to develop. In the 37th session of the Universal Periodic Review, Nauru shared with peer states its progress in legitimizing the human rights treaties that it is a party to, especially in promoting, protecting, and fulfilling the rights of vulnerable groups such as women, children, persons with disabilities, and detained persons. For a small nation like Nauru, issues impacting the environment are directly related to the livelihood and survival of our people. We urge upon developed countries to ensure that the Paris Agreement on Climate Change be strengthened to ensure that the bigger and economically powerful countries mitigate the losses suffered by countries such as Nauru, in particular our land and marine resources. We are all parties to numerous international treaties and conventions on human rights and anti-corruption. But what are we really doing with these treaties and conventions? Are we simply ratifying them to make the numbers to bring these treaties and conventions into effect? By ratifying treaties and conventions, does it make our countries more democratic? Does it ensure human rights are part and parcel of our country's commitments, not only for our own people, but to the international community? On behalf of the Republic of Nauru, I pledge my commitment to bolstering democracy for our small nation, as well as for your nations in our international family. Tobacco.